Last week we saw that among all the copies that we have of the New Testament, those 5,700 um, copies, some of them fragments, some of them full texts, uh, that there are divergences among the copies. And we saw that knowing the difference between what's authentic and what's not might have saved a backwoods Pentecostal preacher his life because he would have known that the longer ending of Mark is not original to Mark. But that raises the question, what do we do? How do we know what's authentic and what's not? Now, before we launch into that, just, just step back with me for a minute and realize that what we're talking about uh, is are minor variances uh, by and large. We're talking about 3% out of the total text of the New Testament has divergent readings. Most of those divergences are um, very minor things. It can be a difference between an a uh or a the, for example, a definite or an indefinite article. Many times one text will say Jesus Christ, another will say Christ Jesus. Not exactly an earth-shattering uh, d- difference, I think you'll agree with me. Um, but sometimes there are uh, trickier differences between texts and it's hard to know uh, what would be what would re- truly reflect the original uh, versus what has uh, been altered or changed. There's an entire science, an entire discipline that is dedicated to figuring out uh, between uh, discrepancies in copies uh, what truly reflects the original, and it's called textual criticism, and it is a fascinating uh, discipline. And to just give you a flavor for, for what it entails, let me, I want you to imagine something with me. Imagine that you are an elementary school teacher and you have a classroom full of 30 kids and you're the teacher and you go up to the, the, the whiteboard. I was going to say chalkboard, but it's all whiteboards these days. You go to the whiteboard and you write out a paragraph and you assign the job to your students. I want you to copy down the paragraph. Look at the whiteboard, see the words. I want you to copy down the paragraph. And you collect at the end of this exercise, you collect all of these copies of your paragraph. And then you grab the eraser and you erase what's on the whiteboard. Now what you have are 30 copies of your paragraph, but you know what? These are elementary school students. I bet those copies have mistakes in them. I bet you one of those kids spelled cat with a K instead of a C. I bet you maybe the punctuation got altered in some of those copies. I bet there are differences in those copies. Hey, they may be 97% accurate as to what your paragraph was, but there are minor discrepancies and differences. Now, I want you to imagine this. Miss, uh, Miss, Mrs. Smith from down the hall, another teacher, comes into your room and you give her an assignment. Mrs. Smith, I want you to take these 30 copies of a paragraph that are all copied um, by these 30 kids and there are discrepancies, there's differences between them. And I want you to put those copies out in front of you and I want you to tell me exactly what I wrote on the whiteboard. This is a fun exercise, you see. We've got the distinction, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, between a manuscript and a text. I've lost the manuscript, okay? Or the manuscript has been wiped clean. It was on the whiteboard. But now we have the text. We've got copies of the text. Do you think Mrs. Smith, looking at those 30 divergent copies, would be able to tell you exactly what you wrote on the whiteboard? The answer to that question is yes, she would. You see, because not every kid is going to make the same mistake. One kid might spell cat with a K, but you know what? The other 29 spelled it with a C. That's going to tell you something important. Uh, Most likely, the teacher did not write cat with a K. It's an obvious error, obvious mistake. Um, So not each uh, copyist is going to make the same kind of mistake. And when there is a mistake uh, made, when there is a divergence, you can come up with various rationales for why the kid um, made the mistake he did. Maybe he looked up at the whiteboard and he was copying down and he he looked down at his paper and then he looked up and his eye picked up in the wrong spot on the board and then continued on. And you can look at his copy versus all the other copies and go, oh, he's missing a word. Well, the teacher didn't write on the board um, the version with the missing word. This is a copyist's error. 
This is the discipline of textual criticism. This is what scholars do. They look at copies of the New Testament manuscripts and they can figure out what's a mistake and what's not, who's right and who's wrong. Most of these are trivial, minor things. Occasionally, they're more substantial, but there are good reasons you can figure out why a scribe might have done what he did, why a scribe might have written the Lord Jesus Christ instead of another one that just says Jesus Christ. Maybe because he wrote during the height of the Byzantine Empire, where um, maybe he wrote after the great uh, period of the fourth century where the, the deity of Christ was the big issue. And people started talking in more reverent tones about Jesus. So an earlier manuscript said Jesus, and this scribe says, well, that's kind of irreverent. It's the Lord Jesus, and he adds it. It's a phenomenal uh, area of study. And I say all of this simply to say that the divergences between the texts, that little 3%, um, is nothing to worry about. That these things can be figured out. The text can be, we can be certain of the text in the vast majority of instances. And even where we're not completely certain, not a single divergence between those copies impacts any central tenet.